I'm showing this on the Ides male trouser block, which I will put a link for in the video description if you'd like to purchase it. So what we're gonna do is add a single welt pocket to the back of this trouser. And if you purchase this block, you'll see that there's actually already an internal line marking a welt pocket. I've actually since edited this and um, revised the download that you get so that it is a little bit lower and doesn't cut through the darts like this. Typically, a welt pocket should really only cut through the very bottom of your darts. So I fixed that going forward. So first with my edit pattern tool, I'm gonna hold shift and select my bottom line on my welt pocket marking. You can see it's three separate lines because it's avoiding the dart. This is why it's ideal for the pocket to sit at the very bottom of the darts. That way the bottom line is one continuous line and you're just kind of cheating the top edge a bit. It would only be a small amount because it's cutting through the dart so low. So the total measurement of the bottom is by my cursor and then I'll also measure the sides and that's gonna be the size of my welt. So then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and left click in the 2D background. I'll enter the width or length of my welt pocket and for height, it's going to be double the measurement of the side marking. So my marking is 3 8 of an inch tall or one centimeter. So I'm putting in three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. The reason for that is that our welt is gonna be folded in half just like it would be in real life. So with my edit pattern tool, I'm gonna select the top and bottom of my welt pattern and choose distribute internal line between segments. This is gonna put a line in the middle of the welt. That's gonna be our fold line. Before you go any further, I suggest setting the particle distance of the pattern to five. This is super important when we put it in the garment. So if you weren't dealing with a dart, normally you'd have just a rectangle marking on your pattern and you could select that with transform pattern and choose right click convert to whole. But in our case, we need to select each of the sections of this internal marking. So I'm using transform pattern and holding shift and I'm going to right click on them and choose cut. Then I'll select the three patterns that make up that box and hit delete on my keyboard. Remember that Clo doesn't delete with symmetry, so you need to go over and select the patterns from your other side and delete those as well. Now we're going to arrange our welt in 3D. So using my gizmo, I'm just gonna get it near the hole in the pant. Make sure you have it on textured surface where you can see the backside of the pattern grayed out. And you'll wanna turn it around so that it's facing the correct way. It doesn't have to be perfect, just get it relatively close and at a decent angle. Then we're gonna grab our fold arrangement tool in 3D and use that middle line to fold our welt down, making sure that the face of the fabric is on the outside. The closer you put the welt to the hole in the pant, the less likely it is to have collision issues when you simulate. And there's no great weight here to arrange it other than by the gizmo. The sewing can be a bit confusing here because the welt is folded. So I'm gonna grab my free sewing tool it's important that you sew the welt first and that you sew the innermost edge closest to the pant. So you can see I'm doing the top of my pattern, but in 3D I can see that the sewing is actually on the bottom because the welt is folded. Then I hold shift and I go across each section of the rectangle on my pant. When you sew one thing to multiple things, you always have to sew the one thing first and then hold shift to sew the others. Then we're going to sew the front edge of our welt to the inside edge. This technique for sewing the internal part to the garment and then sewing the other parts to themselves is super important and really helpful with collision issues. After you sew those parts, you wanna turn the sewing in the property editor. I suggest selecting your fold line and checking fold rendering on in the property editor, which will make the fold look more crisp. The last thing I'll do before I simulate is select my welt pattern and check bonding on in the property editor. This is like applying fusible in real life. Our pocket bag is gonna be the width of our welt. Remember, we're not working with seam allowances here. So with my rectangle tool, I can create a square that's the same length or width as my welt. And the height is just gonna be the depth of your pocket bag. For this bag in particular, remember to account for the height of the welt because this is gonna be the one that sews in at the top. And so if you wanna add an extra centimeter or 3 eighths of an inch, you can. Now I'm gonna use free sewing to sew across the top of my pocket bag and I'll hold shift 
and sew across the top of the opening on my pant. So skipping over each area of the dart. In 3D, I'll right click on my pattern and choose superimpose side. Based on the yellow highlight, it looks like my pattern's not totally inside my garment, so I'll just push it in a little bit with the blue line on my gizmo. If you wanna right click on your pant pattern and choose hide 3D pattern, you can make sure that the pocket is in the right place. Just superimpose a second time if it's flipped up. And you can go to this icon menu here to bring back your pattern. Now we're gonna select our pocket bag facing and just do a copy paste in 2D. So this is our pocket bag that sews to the bottom of the welt. So with edit pattern, I'm gonna click and drag the top down and tap my right click while dragging and enter in the height of my welt so that it's that much shorter than the other pocket bag. Now I'm gonna right click on my pocket bag facing and choose split and add a point at the height of my welt. So I'm putting in 3 eighths of an inch and I'll do this on both sides. Basically, I'm giving myself a point to sew from. With free sewing, I'll sew my pocket bags together from those two points. You'll notice I'm sewing in the same direction on both pocket bags and I turn the sewing. It's super important when working in clothes to keep all your patterns facing out. It's not like real life where the face of the fabric would be inside the pocket. This is gonna help with collision, so I suggest you get in the habit of doing it this way. It also becomes easier to sort out the sewing in 2D. Like before, we'll right click in 3D and superimpose, but this time we're gonna choose over because it's superimposing over the other pocket bag. Here where I slide it in with my gizmo like I did the first time, it's probably best that I should have selected both pocket bags and slid them together because you can see when I slid the outer one, I went through the inner one. So it would have been ideal to just select them both before I slid it with my gizmo. Using segment sewing, I'm gonna sew the top ends of my larger pocket bag to the sides of my welt opening in my pant. I'll also sew the top of my smaller pocket bag to the bottom of the welt opening in my pant. So I'm still using segment sewing and I just hold shift to get each segment. I just need to make sure that little ticking mark is on the front end of each segment as I go across. Even though your welt is in a low particle distance, remember your garment is still in low res, which means the collision thickness of the welt is still 2.5, so it could look a little puffy, and if you want to, you can change it to one and see how it looks. Otherwise, just use the high res garment button when you're finished. Never do complicated arranging with your gizmo like this more than once. So I always do one side first, and then I clone the other side by right clicking and choosing clone symmetric pattern with sewing. When you clone or copy paste patterns that have already been draped, they come in draped the same way on the other side. The problem is that your left pant isn't draped exactly like your right pant, so sometimes you have to do a little finagling with your gizmo for that. Ideally, this issue wouldn't have happened with my welt, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it easily. You can start by strengthening the pattern piece, which is Control H or Command L on a Mac. If it's still not working, grab your Select Mesh box tool and you're going to highlight the side of your welt that should sit on the outside. So I always just highlight in 3D to figure out where that is. And then I just marquee a box over that side of the welt, left click once on the green, and then slide along your gizmo to pull it out. If you have to do it more than once, that's okay. Just stop the simulation and pull again. This process will definitely work, it just might take you a few times to do it. But in most cases, when you clone, it should be fine.